I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man, this sucks. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Cardo. Edward. Dude. Hello. Good. What's up? Great. I didn't ask you what you were doing. <laughs> I was like, I'm jumping ahead. Ed's just ready. I'm to, just ready to go. I'm ready to get the show over I just already. chugged this Diet Coke. I know. <laughs> I got, he's, he's already thinking about Friday traffic. It's like doing a show with somebody's dad. It's totally. Somebody's irritable dad. <laughs> I was like, man, I was like, I was like, dude, we're starting 15 minutes. Like, man, the traffic that's caught me. <laughs> such an old man. Uh, we have a very special guest on the show Am I today. Good to go yet? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm gonna introduce you right yeah. now. All right, all right. <laughs> Ed always fucks us all up. No, it intro. happens. Uh, this guy is super funny. He's blowing up on the scene. Really funny shit all over Instagram. Uh, I heard a lot about him only through Ed, but. You know, just do other comments. Hey, as dude, well. that's the highest compliment <laughs> one can be paid. Dude. Give it up to Max Fine, hey, everybody. Thanks, man. Max Fine. Thank you. Ed, yeah, Ed was mad about the traffic, but so happy you were coming to the show, it's Max. It's crazy that you would assume that there was traffic involved on the train, <laughs> is what I'm really getting at. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. He so drives. I, I drive. Oh, you drove. Yeah, you're worried yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. I drive. I, I drive to Washington Heights after this. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tedward, can I call you Tedward? <laughs> I, I, this is my thing. I, I think it's insane that you're driving at five. Five o'clock. You know better. Just oh, take the insane. train. It's insane. So it's why'd insane. you do it? His well, gear. I just I'm, he likes I'm his a car. I'm a driver now, dude. Mm, yeah, I've had this sense. car now for like two years. I'm just I drive. Dog, I'm driving this van right now, Ooh. and it has no windows, so I'm trying to leave it parked as much as I can. <laughs> and it is so difficult. I look forward to the train now. For the first time in years, I'm like, holy shit, this is great. I don't have to think. I can unplug. It's so nice to be able to see outside of the vehicle but I'm traveling the parking in. Parking is is the worst with the car if you, yeah. you don't have a garage. All right, well, hold on. Right, I'm getting yeah, off topic. Yeah, yeah, we're talking right, about fucking sorry. Ed. This is that, we're Ed does this whenever Ed's all Ed finicky. We always start to show off topics. Let me sure. get back no, to where organic. we got to be. Yeah, <laughs> drink your diet coke, Ed. Settle yourself. Max, what is your worst day job? Let's start there. Okay, so I've got a few worst ones, but there's one in particular. There's some details that I, by law, have to keep vague. These are my favorite. Oh, wow. okay. These are my favorite. So, I just got excited. Yeah. Yes, me too. Um, I think I don't know if the law is nullified, but. <laughs> For my own sanity. Um, <laughs> so I had a job right before the pandemic where it was one of those things where I just kind of like applied to it. And I was like, there's no fucking way they're going to hire me at this director level. I've, I've, I dropped out of high school. I dropped out of college. I do not have any like real skills. <laughs> and I applied on this job board. I was like, fuck it. Well, why, why did you? Um, <laughs> so you just needed a job during the pandemic? No, this was before. So I, I had a sales job that I was terrible at. And okay. I knew they were going to find. You know so, like, about sales, though? Because huh. I work a lot of sales jobs. Like so the. Just for the show makeup, he does a lot of these service working class yeah, old yeah, jobs, yeah, yeah. and I'm an office working class old. Totally. So I love any I've kind of job. I've lived in both. And sales yeah. is one of those things where they don't, you, you could have a record. Like, they don't, as long as you they can don't sell it. Oh, right. But yeah. here's the problem. I couldn't. And so. <laughs> You're like, I don't have an education. Right. Like, no problem. But can and, you sell this? And I take no for an answer so quickly. <laughs> like, so quickly. And I was just, I was really bad at it. I knew they were going to let me go. I was never hitting my numbers. I was there what for- What were you selling? Uh, restaurant software. Uh, you had like oh. a pitch they gave you to do? Sure, they had a whole thing. Was it face-to-face? -face? No, it was uh, over the phone oh. or like over Zoom or okay. some shit. Uh, this was years ago and I knew that they were going to fire me and I was like, I got to find a job. There's no way I can't have insurance, whatever. Yeah. And I found this, I applied for this director level job at this app and they were like, great, you're hired. I was like- Really? <laughs> For the audience, director level, there's like entry. Way too high. There's entry, there's like another level and then usually it's director there's then usually, vp and then it like it's it's a high up job it's the it's about as high up as i think i was i'm ever gonna have and <laughs> and it was like five people in the office and then i was managing this team overseas turns out they hadn't been paid it was a whole fucking wow. thing so the pandemic uh, this happens like a uh, this is like November, end of November of 2020, of 2019. So the pandemic hits and we're just all at home and I keep doing this and I'm like, oh, this is like, there's nothing to do. Like this job is, there's nothing. So I'm like kind of just skirting for a lot of money at the time. I was making tons of money to sit and play NBA 2K and smoke weed and get fucking wasted at 11 a.m. and then do comedy or whatever. Uh, <laughs> How'd you blow that gig? <laughs> like, well, this is what's good. So... So I find out that these guys overseas haven't been paid. And I was like, your well, whole team, basically. my whole team. And they didn't tell me for a year and they didn't get paid for no, a year more than that. Oh, so I start asking a few questions. 
Uh, and then I'm starting to be like, well, there's a lot of shit fucked up here. And like, there's a lot of money coming from weird places. There's a lot of like, I don't know. We're just constantly being sued. It's like a whole fucking thing. I'm in constant contact with the attorney general. And I'm like, this is weird. So yeah. I I asked, I was like, hey, man, is everything we're doing cool? And then I was let go the next day. Ah! So, oh, shit. Oh, my God. But hold on. So it gets so the answer is no. <laughs> well, here's the best part is like a year of him smoking dope, getting fucked up, having the best time of life in the company dime. He wakes up one morning and goes, something's not right here. <laughs> well, here's what I got to figure this well, here's out. Here's why. Because here's the other thing. They didn't pay me on time all the time. Oh, and it was like, oh, okay. there was like this whole thing. Now. I mean, for your team, I'm down for you to like. Totally. That's I great. I was loving it. But I just think it's funny that it took you a year of fucking around before you went. By God, I don't think I've been paid. I was I was pretty sure that I was like, I had to make sure my nut was big enough before I brought it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, smart. I wonder how many games of NBA 2, 2K you're like, yeah, I got I to gotta, I gotta deal with this tomorrow. Now, dude, <laughs> tomorrow. No, because there was nothing to deal with. I know. It was like you don't so even know. fake. And so and that's what you were there for, to kind of be the guy, the scapegoat guy, right. basically. Oh, and there was nothing. Shit. And so. That's totally what it is. It's, well, right, kind of. Yeah, yeah, so they right. let me go. I go and bring my laptop back. They give me severance. And I've come to find out that they had not taxed me at all. Not a penny. Oh. So they were paying my health insurance. They were paying for my subway card at the time. But they were not taxing my paychecks. I wind up owing the IRS like 20 grand. Oh, yeah. It's a fucking disaster. I'm never going to get out of this debt. And I've accepted that. <laughs> so... In February of last year, so uh, uh, I'm starting to see that this company is being sued by the FTC for fake reviews, and it's an app that does bring someone's safety into question if they use it. So I see all this is happening. I was like, well, thank God I'm out of there. In February of last year, I found this other remote job that I no longer have, uh, but I get a call from them. They're like, hey, I know this is weird, but it's not a big deal. There are two FBI agents in the office looking for you. And I was like, well, you know, he works remotely. He's not here. And I'm freaking the fuck out. This oh, is yeah, a year dude. and a half after I've lost this You got this Rico job. predicates on you now? Terrified. Dicking around playing NBA 2K? Dog, I'm, I don't know what the fuck is going on. So I go, the next day I'm at a coffee shop uptown. And I get a, I still have the voicemail from this FBI agent. He's like, I'm at your house. Uh, what, we set up a time to meet the next day. He comes in. So it's two FBI agents come to my door the next day. They come Where'd in. you hide your weed? I wasn't worried about it. Uh, I was just like, fuck it. They, I was like, they whatever. Got me already. Yeah, I was like, if this is what they're here for, <laughs> then this is crazy. I'm small potatoes I, compared I, to what yeah. they're doing. So they they say, they come into where I do my I used to do my podcast with a guy with my buddy Michael yeah. who's on a TV show. They the, the FBI guys sit down in the chairs we usually sit, and I was like, you know, usually a network TV star sits in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy was like, what? I was like, never mind, man. And, uh, we're Don't closing worry. on P. Diddy right now. Yeah, I don't really yeah, give a yeah, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and so they started asking me all these questions about that guy, the CEO of that job. They wouldn't tell me anything. And I light up like a fucking... Oh, you can't I'm wait just to like, spill the beans. Because this guy was a prick in yeah. so many ways. Oh, and sure. he like... Dude, he had... I've never been in... I went to his apartment twice, and I've never been in a home like this. Like, this is a great home. Thank this you. is a beautiful apartment. <laughs> doesn't hold a candle oh yeah so what this he had a soho loft oh, that was yeah. like dude he had a wine chiller and oh. he had like three different sinks and like four different it was crazy dude those soho lofts go the length of the block it was yeah. some nuts they're they go yes. from one you can you can go on on either sullivan like, or uh, thompson like Ted, let me ask you have, you have you ever seen a peloton in someone's house no okay how about two? Oh wow i have wow. uh i it was crazy so whoever he's fucking that night if they want to no no he, he, had a, he has a girlfriend oh. she's a, a model and a horse girl and she's about 25 years younger than him and uh a horse girl like she does the writing yes oh, man. um and you know you know, I was telling all these FBI guys, I'm like talking about it. They're like, did you see anything weird in his apartment? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah his and wife's then, a horse girl. <laughs> right. And so I explained this all to them. They're like, wait, this is an apartment in Soho? I was like, yeah. They were like, do you know the address? I was like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, shit. yes, Crack I face. do, motherfucker. Dude. Yes. I'll take it there myself. Do. This guy, he was one of those dudes that wow. like, he, his whole thing was like, we got to accept Bitcoin before Tesla does. And I was like, okay, this is you. You're this guy. Yeah. And he's just convinced that he's going to outrun everything smarter than everybody. He's like flaunting this money that I've never, I've never seen this shit before. He's like, yeah, I'm out in my house in the Hamptons or whatever. And I was like, whoa. 
Come to find out, it's he's renting everything. Oh yeah, yeah everything. Yeah, it's yeah, a facade. It's all yeah, fake. Yeah, yeah. Right. Every car is leased. All the shit is fake. And and now I'm just like I have no idea what he's up to. But he starts calling me a few months back, and I I'm not answering. But I'm like he he calls me and I text him. I was like, what do you want, man? And he goes, oh sorry, wrong guy. And yeah, it's like, right. Okay, dog. You okay. knew I talked to the feds. Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't mind talking about that. I won't say the name, and of I will course. say that they didn't give me enough severance. If they <laughs> wanted me to shut my mouth, <laughs> they didn't give you quiet money. I'll say this: his first name is John. <laughs> and you would have, if you really cared about this, if you were smart, if you had more yeah. than two brain cells in yeah. your brain, because you were like, you would yeah. know that five grand is not enough. <laughs> no. Not enough that to keep my mouth shut. That was a 40 job. At wow. least, dude. That was a f- At least. It was a full year pay, if you want to be honest. And more than that, you still owe me 20000 from the fucking taxes you didn't take out what that I had to pay to the piece IRS. Of shit. Yeah, real piece of shit. Yeah, fuck that guy. Um, that's wild. I, so the look on the FBI uh, FBI agent's face when they look up, dude, dude, that must have been such a rush. Amazing. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and you have information that they don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make a movie. It's like, I was so, freaking out, and I'm like, they should no. make a movie about your life, starting of you playing NBA 2K, smoking <laughs> weed, smoking weed. Like, what? for a whole year, they just yeah, filmed yeah, you yeah. doing that. <laughs> and then, like, you have this thing. What the fuck is this movie? Then is this anything going to happen? FBI yeah. agents are at your gig, just in the back of the grizzly pair, <laughs> making sure you're. I didn't really like that that setup bit. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that guy. Uh, well, <laughs> dude, so the, well, the best part, the best part. Do you guys know Adam Gilbert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Adam's yeah, my roommate, yeah. and so the, these these FBI guys are talking to me. I don't realize Adam's outside the door the whole time listening, in. and and it, and like I think that I'm in their good graces. I'm like, oh fuck, I've given them some information. I'm like, you know, I do owe the IRS twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> That. I was I like, you're negotiating after you gave I'm them trying. the info. Well, I'm just like, is there anything you can do for me? They're like, oh, those years of sales training paying yeah. off right yeah. there. <laughs> What's happening to all his sales knowledge? <laughs> well, and they're just like, we don't Agent do that. If I, uh, if I could just have your <laughs> ear for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Do you mind? <laughs> do you mind? Is that something? You, you, see, you bring out your documents? <laughs> yeah. See here. Do you see the value see this in this? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a mess. And as soon as they go, we don't do that, I hear Adam outside crack the fuck up. Um, <laughs> I love that. It was the best. That was So that was like the best and worst day job I've ever had. Oh, that's um, incredible. I made more money than I've ever made, but I also I owe oh, more money. Oh, you paid money. for it. Oh, yeah, you oh, paid yeah, for absolutely, it. Oh, yeah, absolutely, dude. I wasn't that ready That whole for year it. off, like I had the same thing happen to me where I claimed unemployment when I first moved here. Like I've been here since 06. And when I moved here, I didn't have a job. Yeah. But I was still under the umbrella of unemployment in California. Yeah. And I requested unemployment the week before I'd left. They paid me that unemployment. Yeah. Well, apparently, I didn't have an address because I was, you know, moving here. Right. They said they sent me unemployment, California government said they sent me a notice saying that I didn't, you know, deserve these funds for whatever reason. Either I think the employer tried to retract it and I needed to pay it back. But I never received it. Oh, shit. So it just sat and sat and sat and built, built interest for almost yeah. 12 years. Oh. And I didn't know anything about it because I lived in another state. Yeah. Until the federal law came in where other states can take your federal tax return. So oh, I think no. I'm getting back, I don't know, eight grand one year. They took all of it. Dude, wow. that's it sucks. was a four hundred dollar wow. unemployment payment. These cocksuckers. It was one payment. It was one, one payment that over twelve years they had accrued interest. Dude, oh, that's they, this. They, they drilled me, dude. I got fucked with my license in this similar manner. So I was driving to Florida from Atlanta, and I got a ticket. Like it was right before I moved here. And you know those like highway t- uh, cameras that get the speeding tickets. Yeah, yeah. I get one of those, and then I move. And I didn't get, they got sent to my old address, yep. which I was not living at. And five, six years go by. And fucking, you remember Car to Go? Oh, it was yes. like a zip car yeah, kind the of zip car thing. Yeah. Or was it Car to Go? No, it was Revel, the scooters. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. signed up for Revel, and they do a license check, which triggers this thing that like fucking triggers this other thing. My license is suspended. I now owe $7,000 in collections money uh. just to get my license reinstated in Atlanta. Uh, and it was like I owed a collections agency in Texas. I owed a, a judge in Florida and then the state of Georgia. And it was like an insane amount. Uh, of money. Let me let me, you know, not to bum everybody out. Let's throw this one out there. We're both road. We're all all three of us are road guys. Imagine you don't know that and you're driving in some other state because I've been Dog. pulled over a lot. Just yeah. like 
dumb comedy shit or you're driving late at night with plates that aren't from that state and some fucking hit cop wants to fuck with you. I mean, yeah. that's happened to me in the, the 18 years I've been doing stand-up a lot. And they pull, they run your shit. They want nothing more than to fucking bury you. Oh, I mean, yeah. they, they'll rip that's you out of the quota, car for bro. that. They'll, they'll rip you out of the car for that kind of shit. That's true. I've also been, and, and uh, it's going to happen eventually, but I've been so fucking lucky so yeah. many oh, times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like, because I don't drink anymore, so now I'm just like, do whatever you want. Sure. Now. Uh, just don't look in the trunk yeah. or uh, <laughs> or the glove compartment. You become 99 problems right yeah, away. Yeah, like, yeah, are yeah. you saying that song again? Yeah, no, yeah, the yeah, trunk. Yeah, yeah. You, you need a warrant for that. that. You, yeah, yeah. you need a warrant. You need a warrant. And powdered drugs aren't the same <laughs> as booze. And, like, it's... Dude, so... Uh, but I used to get pulled over in high school, like... And I, I'll never forget being stoned out of my mind and, like terrified every time it would happen and i don't know how i would get out of it and i still think like i'm trying to think if i've really had an experience like oh yeah i should have been pulled over car to go this is the thing that i'm remembering now so i pay the thing i get my license reinstated i live in crown heights and i was running a show in bushwick i did drink it this time and it was so much easier to rent a car to go and drive to Crown Heights than it was to take the train, which would take like an hour. So I'd get blasted. (laughs) Rent these like smart cars, those little two-person boys, and just zip around and like fuck in the rain, just like, nobody's going to catch me here. Like It's almost like it's not driving drunk if it's a go-kart. Beyond that, (laughs) how many you got to really fuck up to get a DUI in New York? Because you're not going over 25 25 miles an hour. And if you're in a little baby car, it's like, dog, yeah. I'll be okay. Yeah. I crashed that. Th- no, uh, but, <laughs> no, I never did. Uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I just never Still worried about limp. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for Still sure, it wasn't a problem. That's why I quit drinking. Uh, well, you know. It's so funny. I have, uh, I'm have. i an alcoholic as well. Um, oh, and I, had yeah. cut, I had to cut way back. On my, I still drink. Yeah. But uh, I cut so far back. And it's not until you really cut back on your boozing that you go, I, I thought this was a good idea. Like Which the part? Th- oh. Well, just like the... Dude. You do think you can drive drunk. Oh. Oh, yeah, dude. In fact, I'm going to be very honest. I I really, that's how much of a drunk I was. I was like Sully Sullivan kind of drunk. I like, would tell I, myself. I could get rip shit. I'll land this plane in the Hudson. <laughs> like the, I'm fucking yeah. relaxed as shit right now. I'll, yeah. I'll land any plane in the Hudson. I used to tell myself shit like that. Well, like, Sully did it and saved a lot of people. So <laughs> I think it's probably in my best interest. <laughs> Dude. If I take my friend's car and <laughs> I was living in, uh, I just moved to New York and I just made like these new friends and it's Cinco de Mayo. There's where I'm dry. I have my Saturn station wagon. Hell we're yeah. drinking. He's like, yeah, we're going to, uh, we were going to see Robert Hunter from uh-huh. the Grateful Dead yeah, yeah. Uh, it, at the Beacon, but we were going to this party down in Fidei first. Damn, and man, I'm a socialite. And Jesus they're like, Christ. they're it, like, I'm like, how are we getting? We're, he's like, you're just going to have to drive. I was like, okay. You guys are cool with that? <laughs> I'm like, because yeah, yeah, I do I'm good at this. So <laughs> we're driving around. Now it's like 3 a.m. and we're at this Coke bar in like deep Explain Bushwick. to people Coke sure. bar. It's literal. Yeah, yes, yeah. where they sell cocaine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the audience, that yeah, is it back like us. No, <laughs> it was, no, 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 it was, no. Yeah, it was a bar that didn't have like any signs out front. You know, yeah, it was just yeah, a yeah. guy opens up I've the thing. I've been to a coke bar. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Totally. So we're and we're coming from that at like three in the morning, and I'm driving. Now we're like wrapping up. We're going back to his place. I have no lights on. Oh. And the I whole drive time, right across Broadway, uh, you know, under the JMZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right across Broadway with no lights on in front of, right past the cop and. Oh, Pull me over, dude. Oh. There's Bob. But well, you already a, did a bunch of coke, right, dude? I'm loaded with cocaine. Have you There's taken a, some already? Oh yeah. yeah. So well, you're squared you're up. Yeah, yeah, so you're yeah, squared. Yeah, yeah. No, what we'll do about you're not whole? Eight hours, oh, ten hours. Okay. It's been an all day affair, and there's beer all over the place. Like it's just there's empty bottles, everything like that. A cop comes up. It's a female cop, and she goes, uh, "You say, hey, hon, what part of the boot you she, from?" She yeah. goes like this. She comes up, and I go, "Listen, I'm not gonna bullshit you." I've had a few. <laughs> she goes, oh, my God, get out of the car. Get out of the car. And I'm, like, standing in the car. And then I'm going to bullshit you. Dude. I love how you think the, the blatant like honesty is going to get you out of This is like a guy who just saw Brene Brown for the first time. Like, Radical honesty is important. And everybody knows that the law bends for people that are honest and open. You made with- your own plea deal before they even took you to court, you <laughs> fucking idiot. You're telling this to your cell phone. Like, you've called the police yourself while she's walking up to give you a ticket. Hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've had a few. <laughs> so yeah. she goes over Your lights my, aren't on. Yeah. She goes over my buddy. She 
she's like, how could you let him drive like that? And he's all fucked up. She goes, oh, my God, the two of you. And then she's like talking to me. He's very good looking, does very well with ladies. Next thing I know, I'm like on the front the hood with my you know like this i hope that doesn't come into play at all just the <laughs> fact that he does well with women and you still go to jail <laughs> so i hear this i hear this line so uh or she goes uh so you like cops oh. i'm like what the fuck Damn. I'm, and now this is where like he's just fucking her while you have to watch her yeah like i'm like all my like self instincts of preservation have just gone out the window yeah. to like pure jealousy and i'm just like i go Hey, we don't want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> what a saltine! <laughs> you cockfucking <laughs> You better be taking me to jail when you fuck this guy. A buddy for prison time is such a weird move. <laughs> I better be in the drunk tank yeah. before he's ball deep in you, <laughs> officer. Oh, boy. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I would if you're my friend. I'd be so mad at you. Like, dude, I'm getting us out of this thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. so jealous. Yeah, dude, yeah. fucking talking shit. I, I, I used to get out of shit with cops. Like when he got real close. Like I, uh, I was in high school, and my buddy that I was like hanging out with, we skipped school. He was like. I should have, this did not register. I swear to God, I did not think about it. He was like, yeah, I found some jewelry in the park. I'm going to go to the pawn shop. Let's go. And I'm like 16. Like, yeah, that makes sense. This guy's the best. Dude, yeah. And so he's like, we hotbox his car and we're driving and we go to the pawn shop. And I was like, this all makes, everything checks out. Like, I, I get it. And at this time, I was also going to NA meetings for no real reason other than I thought it was kind of funny and I made some friends and I have all my keychains and shit yeah, yeah. and so we go to the pawn shop we get out of the pawn shop we start driving again and it's rainy it's all a fucking mess and there are cops behind us and they're doing the lights and I was like I think we're getting pulled over he's like no nah, man that's not for us and he's like we're pulling you over <laughs> And we pull over, and they get a, they'd gotten a call from the pawn shop that was like, hey, I think I just got all the stolen jewelry. <laughs> they, they pull us over. They arrest my buddy because he was holding heroin. Oh. Uh, and so then I'm in the, like, passenger seat of my car. I've, I was drinking. Uh, I had this, like, do you guys remember Sparks? No. That was like the first four locos, like the energy oh, okay. drink. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could drink them while you drove. It looked like you were drinking a Red Bull. It was awesome. Yeah, and, and you're I totally had really thro- hammered. Yeah. yeah, I had thrown that under the seat. I had thrown this fake ID under the seat, and they let they like pull me out, <laughs> and they're like, "What are you doing? We're like, what? What's your fucking deal?" I was like, "Oh man, I was I'm just going through a rough time, you know. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I actually don't do drugs. I'm sober, man." They're like, "What?" I was like, and I pull out my keychains from NA. I'm oh. like, "So this one's for 30 days. <laughs> this one's for 60 days." They're like, "We get." It. I was like, "Well, this one's for 90 days." And then, <laughs> and then they like check out my fucking iPod. They're like, "This is yours." I was like, "Yeah." They're like, "Well, you have to prove it somehow." And I was like, "Okay." They're like, "What were you last listening to?" I was like. Stranglehold, Ted Nugent, because that's the only song I ever put on when I got stoned when I was 16 on repeat. And they, because yeah, you do everything in slow motion. It's like, and you can just kind of walk around and it looks real fucking cool. And oh man, I used to drive people nuts at bars. Did I love this. being kind of a stoner, a stoner, because I do have a lot of little. I'm a big pop guy. Idiosyncrasies of what I like to do when I'm high, and it's like totally. there is a music vibe. Well, th- when there I was is 16, a food vibe. this was yeah. definitely my like. This gets uh, this makes everybody laugh when I uh, <laughs> and nobody fucking liked it, but but I knew it's that like that's, that bit you won't let go <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so and good. So then I'm like, well, yes, yeah, Ted Nugent Strangle, <laughs> and they, they laugh, they give it back to me, and I'm like. I think I'm in the clear. I'm like, yeah. so can I get a ride back to school? I or love what? you and your negotiations. I get so confident, dude. I get so confident. And they're like, no. <laughs> this ain't a fucking after school special. Yeah, 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 We're yeah. taking your buddy into jail for heroin. Dude, and so it's raining. I'm walking back to On school. The freeway? And I'm, uh, well, it was, uh, we were pretty close. And I was high as a kite. And I get back, I get into chemistry class and I'm like, I'll never forget, like I had a beaker of molasses that I'm pouring into something else and I'm just so stoned that I can't do it. And the teacher comes up, she's like, are you all right? I was like, they took one, they took one away. And like, (laughs) your day was like one of those days in some TV show where you've done like 90 things. You go from a pawn shop to being in a cop car to being in in chemistry in quite a matter of seconds. The whole thing in 30 minutes. But this was also an alternative school. So this was a school where kids that couldn't hack it. Oh, so yeah, well, uh, yeah okay. that's so, like the last stop. Exactly. Before I was Judy. the only person that went there by choice. 
<laughs> just like the NA meets. Dude, we'll get yeah, kind of. Well, here was the deal <laughs> like with your this. method acting for your future. You get it. You get it. Yeah, I want to be prepared for every possible scenario. But like this shit, I mean, I went to high school with 21 year olds and stuff. Like, oh, wow. yeah, dude. So because like every the deal was it was like if you got kicked out of school, this was the like public school, like last chance thing. But the way it worked was you get a year of a class that was in a packet. So the packet was like this thick. You finish the packet of work. You finish the class. And I was like, oh, I can finish this real fucking quick. I did like a year of school in two weeks. And was like, I'm going to chill for a second wow. and just kind of fuck off. Some people go to Europe. They call it a gap year. <laughs> Max Fine just takes a packet of work at an alternate school. <laughs> but then, up the pot shop. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking get to work. I Let it finish. <laughs> that was it. I would, dude, I would sit in my Volvo. I had a Volvo station wagon. I would sit sit back there fucking seats down and I would have I had a six CD changer in there <laughs> oh, oh dude in the dude. trunk oh no 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 no, no. Oh. mine was in the front and it's like but, it, but everything it was still was a bitch to change you remember the those worst. underneath oh, the dude. seat dude you're yeah you're kicking the tray and shit I had one so at the end of this car though it had it was the six CD changer was broken and it had two CDs in there <laughs> and, I, and I heard I two for five years straight <laughs> yeah um, yeah it was Taylor Swift's 1989 I got it as a joke and then because it got stuck I listened to it over and over I was like this is the greatest album I've ever I'm now a huge Taylor Swift fan like massively and then the second half of David Cross's Shut Up You Fucking Baby was also in there but not the first so like and the radio didn't work so like I remember every word to the second half of that in 1989 by Taylor Swift that's a that's incredible it's the oh best my God. the best uh. Oh, that's so funny. And then, yeah, I would just smoke weed and eat bagels all day in this fucking Volvo. <laughs> what's a job you've had? Okay, let's. What's a moment in your stand-up career that was like your highest moment that you had to definitely go to a day job the next day? Like kind of that Cinderella effect. Oh, I recorded an album and then... <laughs> Went to work the next day. Well, like, or, you, how did you feel? Well, it was another fuck off job, and uh, so it was like, because here's the thing, like, I was, I don't know, I was such a drunk for so long yeah. that I didn't really get to have a high stand up moment that yeah. I remember. Like, yeah. the first seven years I did stand up, I didn't, I was blackout drunk every time I got on stage. Wow. And so it's like, I mean, I know a lot of cool things happened. I couldn't tell you what they were. Um, but yeah, definitely doing an album and being like, wow, wow, this rips, this is great. And then I guess I do technically have to be awake at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, it was yeah. just bizarre. But like, I don't know. Once I started doing stand up, it was like every job was a fuck off job. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, I don't know, a so lot of waiting did, tables, a lot of like. It doesn't hurt or sting as bad. Or, I mean, I, we've talked to people that have done TV shows that go back to a job. And yeah. they, I think Matthew Bastard was telling us that he liked. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, oh, go, and guess what I go was around just, the I was, office yeah. and telling everybody yeah yeah kind of yeah, 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 yeah we've heard people go I, it was depressing to have yeah. to walk back into my yeah. storage unit reception job yeah you yeah. know like after I did it's Colbert. weird because like people kind of figured it out like because I would have office jobs once I got to New York after like I temp for about a year yeah found a job and like office kinda, jobs are the best well I was like dude I can do startup jobs and they're either going to crumble or they're going to succeed right. and that's when I got to dip anyway yeah yeah and yeah, so yeah. it's like you just keep jumping from those it'll be all right yeah oh wow so, interesting but the problem is these are all people on their computers and you get to know them they're like oh we're gonna look you up and it's like Please don't, don't. Please don't. Yeah, yeah. Please don't. Don't. Like my old boss found out that I do stand up and was like, it just opened this thing of like, we're not friends, dude. Yeah, like yeah, I don't yeah, want to, yeah, and yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. talk to you about this. Yeah. Like it's very cool that you've supported this and you like even it's bought so, my shit. But like, it's oddly private. I'm realizing more and more as I don't need the recognition as much as I used to. Sure, sure. It's like you, you know, I, I do business here. And I'm actually a professional business person yeah so it's different than just fuck off jobs like i actually yeah, yeah, have yeah. something i'm doing that is kind of related to the entertainment part as sure. well but ultimately I, I really would like people to not google me yes because sure. it is a real thing it's yeah. not like yeah. a, like jobs i've had where a fuck off job right where i'm talking about girls i slept with after the show with this dipshit dude that works in the back with sure me. sure sure you know, i used to love those jobs when i first started stand up oh, like a mailroom like, job oh, like yeah. a job yeah. where you oh, were i love yeah. the retail oh, job i love yeah. the fucking just stand around serving job like oh, a lunch yeah. serving gig was the oh, fucking oh, i was the king of the bullshitters yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah always yeah. bullshit uh, but i was also 23 like 
let me tell you about the road. Yeah. And like, and I, and like, and like had Gather no around, business. Kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, but also, I don't know. I, yeah, because I got fired from the job I had when I started. St- I was working at the Apple I've been store. Fu- I've been fired for being a stand-up. Yes. Because I'm, an, I'm 43. So I started sure. stand-up 18 years ago or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. They were not. It's not like now where social media people see stand up all the time right. that they go, oh, I've heard of us. They just think you're not here to be the best. Right. Right. Fucking. Well, that's uh, what it used to be. And secretary, that, you could be. You yes. know that sales job. Every sales that dude. They were just like, oh, so you're uh, out late every night and doing this. It's like, Fuck, yeah. Mom. But why do you know? Why do you care? Yeah. Like, why are am you I, talking to me about? Yeah, this? yeah, yeah. I know I show up hungover every morning, and I know I'm not. <laughs> you should be my way numbers. more worried about my alcoholism. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I am shit canned right now. <laughs> it took me two beers to get here. That because was I that hate was it. the last day I was there. They were like, "So can you be honest, like, because I was pretty open with like, yeah, no, I've got a drinking problem. And like, uh, because like, dude, day one we had a, a company party. I was like, oh, this new hire blacked out. And see, that's oh, where yeah. I used to get caught too. Is like, I, oh, yeah. I will. I was a f- really, fu- I'm a really, really high functioning alcoholic. Yeah, which made I, it I was so too. hard to to cut back. Yes, because how can you tell me if I'm making more money than I ever made? I have more stuff going on than ever. Yeah, that I need to stop doing what I'm doing. It's like how are you going to tell me that? But then I realized it. Yeah. But ultimately, what always showed my true colors at any kind of job, whether yeah. stand up or otherwise open bar the minute uh, oh, there was an open uh, bar engagement dude, dude. you saw like oh this guy's a problem yeah the, the i amount, couldn't hold it together at open bar yeah. i couldn't do it at a closed part like because <laughs> that was the thing like, you're spending your paycheck dude. you better fucking dude. believe it dude, dude. like i because that was the thing it was like um the open bar was harder than a paid bar because an open bar is like okay well like before i get there it's like all right I got to start here, but I can't do liquor until then because I got to. You yeah. kind of like, know, you know, you know that you have to pace yourself yeah, because then, it's an open bar. And it's such a f- red flag for you. But like just out regular drinks, you're like, you're like the guy. You're like, let's well, beyond shots. that, dude, even yeah, right. trying to pace it. It's like after you get that second one, it's like everybody here is drinking. And yeah. then it's like, oh, no, dude, I yeah. just I'm trying to relate to people that I shouldn't be. I'm just like. So you're the CEO, huh? Yeah, you're yeah. the big dog. <laughs> oh, dude. I, oh, my God. There were so many moments. Thank God I'm still relatively charming with eight drinks. It's when I got to the tent that I was like, oh, this guy's, an, this guy's a problem. Dude, I will never forget. This is day one of this job. I have gone in for training, and then they're like, we're doing this party. It was a, in North Williamsburg at that little like uh, garden area, whatever, by the water. Mm-hmm. And I get so blasted. And the first day? First day. <laughs> and, and the next, the next, dude, I wake up. I am asleep on the train station, uh, on the platform of the Marcy J station. <laughs> I have pissed my pants. <laughs> I, it is four hours after this party is ended. I have no idea where I've been. I get to work the next day. <laughs> and they're like, so how was the thing? I was like, what? They were like, you know what? I was like, what are you talking about? They're like, you left the party abruptly and you were like, I've got a hot date and a show. And I was like, I did what? <laughs> and and it, like for all You're even bragging in your blackout stage. Dude, and I, I don't know, but but that's not true because I, I think I was like trying to because I've done this before where it's like I need to give an excuse for why I want to leave where right. I'm at. Yeah. yeah. And I think I told that dude this and I didn't want to be like, actually I peed my pants and fell asleep. And the tr- <laughs> like, and so I yes, I did have something I had to get to, but I had a, a My thing was I was always I would always take my shirt off. Oh, I would that always, was a tell always, that dude, was Dude, tell. Always yeah. take your shirt off. There's a bar in Atlanta called Church. It's um, and they do church organ karaoke on Wednesdays. That's awesome. It is awesome. Every Wednesday, I would get wasted, get down in my underwear, <laughs> sing piano, man, and like nobody fucking liked it. It's like, yeah. but I would do this every fucking. They and still let you come back. They wouldn't let anybody else do piano, man. It was like, it was like a thing. Come watch just, this guy do yes. this. It was like just a me. naked cowboy. <laughs> Kind of. And then, dude, I'll never forget. So I was sitting at karaoke once, and someone was like, Jessica Alba's here. I was like, oh, she's going to love this. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's going to yeah. be all over Dude, dude about that's... 30 seconds in, I just watch her go, nope, and leave. Yeah. And I was like, oh, ah, man. dude. That's that was my, your shot. That that's was my, my favorite. She, yeah. That's my favorite feeling of like that drunk. She's going to love yeah, this. Junior. Oh, they're going to love. Way to get a I've load of I've never had me. that. Yeah. I've, I've, that's that's everything I've ever thought about stand-up. It was, <laughs> they're going to fucking love. I'm like puking on the ground. I'm like, God. God damn, I'm good at this, kid. Like, Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm spending 20 minutes. I, well, what kind of shots do you have at the bar to bring up here? Like, God, I'm good. <laughs> I had to go on a vacation once. I had to, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I was with this woman who was very successful and older than me. And she was like, hey, we just started dating. And I had just really begun my journey of alcoholism. And sure. she's like, um, my company, she worked for this really, really Ooh. high financial firm, gave gives me for being a high performer a week free in Barcelona and a big party and I'm allowed to bring one guest they pay for would oh you like to come boy. with me so I'm like I've never been overseas yeah oh yeah I'm a fu- I'm just str- I'm literally working all of uh PJ's rooms at the time yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. the lantern which wasn't PJ's room but like lantern uh Sal's comedy hall which became the new uh, village underground, the comedy underground or whatever, and right. then the old Boston. So I was just, I was doing tons of stand up and making like under the table cash. Yeah. But I was a broke dick. I mean, I was baroque. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at. It's like when you're a poor kid looking at someone's house that just has stairs in it. You're like, fuck, look at this mansion. Like everything I saw (laughs) on this trip, I was like uh, just bushy eyed and just new to the world, just wet behind the ears. We go to Marbella. She. So you're already saying places I've never heard of. You know, right? It's like we start out in Marbella. I'm like, what's this? We're on the beach. There's this like 25 year old woman and her hot European mother topless in front of us. The girl I'm with's like. I'm gonna go topless too. It is. It's. It's now the, a fucking fantasy land. I am in a. I think I am somebody. We're flamenco dancing. Yo. I'm eating paella. So we get to the party, the big boss party. And this whole trip, she's been like, I can't stand this head guy, the CEO. He's just oh, so rude no, to me. I know where this is so going. I yeah, yeah. The seeds are planted. Well, you know, I, I'm a world traveler now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I get hammered. Where I'm like, I'm gonna charm you. I'm gonna set your whole. I'm gonna set your whole year up. Hey, Bob! I'm, <laughs> I'm acting like I know this fucking uh, guy. You know my, you know my girl. Right? I've barely been with her a, a uh, month. My girl, she's the best, right? Isn't she great, Bob? Come on, over. I heard you guys always have a little problem together. You guys don't always see eye to eye. It's all right, though, Bob. You're a friend of mine. She pulls me aside. She's like. She's making like half a million dollars each because listen, this is my fucking job. <laughs> People are walking around saying you're hanging all over the CEO. <laughs> oh, dude, dude. I mean, what are you talking about? That fucking rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? You're gonna get a raise tomorrow. Uh, oh my. I literally ate her out for an hour when we got back to the room in hopes in my drunk brain. I'm like. She's going to forget if I can make her have multiple orgasms. If she comes, she'll forget she was fired. I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is classic drunk dude logic. I understand this entirely. Oh, my God. I love I was, this so much. I was in so uh, much trouble. I, did she stay with you? She stayed with that's me, That's fucking wow. stupid. Oh, it must have worked. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, wow. I never... I never had something like that. I fucked up a lot of comedy opportunities. Be like, this fucking guy loves me. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, this is my best friend. I haven't been back to Missouri in ten years. So that's, uh, that's my problem with the open bar. It's the reverse of you guys. I went into debt because I would spend two hundred dollars a night drinking. Oh, and make th- no mistake. But uh, then when I see the open bar, it's I don't start out like when I'm paying. I start out slow. Like, nah, I'm not going to spend too much. So, but the fourth, I spend a lot. But the open bar, I go double. So here's, Make it a double. I get that. But my issue was, and I, make no mistake, I am deep in debt for the IRS. <laughs> Dude, alcohol so, yeah. put me in so, so much, much debt. debt. I would do, so my, my go-to is I would do six rounds of beers and shots at the bar. Yeah. So you get six beers, six shots, and then on the way back, you get a six, pla- six pack of White Claw. You drink that. And that'll get you through the night. Yeah. yeah. So it's like 18 is the magic number. Yeah. And See, that's why I started drinking hard alcohol. Yeah. Because it was going to it was gonna get me there faster, and I didn't have to buy as much. Shot in a beer, though, is the most effective You're way right. to drink in New York. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, so, totally. Yeah, because you're getting a deal every time. And then White Claw is just, that's a nice palate cleanser at 3 a.m., dude. <laughs> See, and, it's so funny that you guys, because I was all about like three beers in, I'm like, all right, let's get some cocaine. Like, yeah, I'm just, uh, like, that's I'm like, see, I uh, that was me younger. Coke was a yeah. thing. I never Coke because here's the thing I, I still do drugs, I'm by no means like uh, sober, but right, I, I like Coke, I can't do uh, just because like I can't do anything that is just like with Coke without booze is the worst. 
It is a lot of sweating and a lot of. I mean, it depends how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie's, Eddie's just butt. gotta like, smoke it. Sm- oh, smoking coke. Eddie's yeah. spine just tingled when you said that. <laughs> I mean, like, dude, yeah. I've never smoked coke, but oh. I would. Oh, yeah. I dude, would. Careful. dude, this guy right here. <laughs> my yeah, this, I just, that's my his. heart just started raising. Really? <laughs> He's like, uh, you want you want to get you know you want to get it. <laughs> I mean, kind of. No, I, uh, no. You know what? I, I got, got my car. You know, I'm a driving guy oh, now. I mentioned right, that up that's top. That's right. I heard you can get us there whipping. Oh, yeah. baby. I don't got nowhere to be till 1 a.m., brother. I, um, no, I fucking. I, I like last year because I got into fish. And, oh, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. And I remember when that happened, right? Oh, yeah, huge, yeah. Huge, huge, the, huge. The, he went to fit. He was like a different person the next day. Well, you're yeah, not. You're not into life. fish. Yeah. You're a great. You're a Pink Floyd Grateful Dead guy. I used to go. I used yes. to go see but the Grateful Dead. You're a jam band live. guy in general, and that's see, a I'm whole. Not, nah, I'm not. I'm not. I only like fish. Jam band guy. Yeah. I only like. I'm more of a ween. I like ween. Oh, ween's its own thing, though. That's its own. Like that's what I mean. There's like entities. There's a culture involved with each of these bands. There's a culture. That's what I'm saying. There is. Ween got looped into the jam band scene, but they're not really that. Yeah. Yeah, but fish is like I, I had never been I had a horrible as a trip I had to leave after 20 minutes still the best band and so I went and saw them no kid 13 times last year Damn. wow the best I can't you're all in I'm so in dude I'm going to see them four nights in a row in Delaware this year I can't wait they're playing the sphere next week Damn. I want to die in a go um, but yeah that's when I was like oh shit I can put other things up my nose that aren't coke this rips, dude. Yeah. Oh, I was like, yeah. ketamine's like, well, cool. Oh, dude. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to try ketamine. I'm it's a bit. Great. I love Molly. I think Molly, Molly doesn't to work me, for me. Really? It's because I'm an antidepressant. Oh, and ketamine. I think that's I've heard why that before I, too. I love ketamine oh, so yeah. much. Is it totally? I'm like, oh, I can see. I can compartmentalize every aspect of my life when I'm high on ketamine and be like, this is the problem here. This yeah. is the problem here. And. Granted, I've done the medical ketamine. I've done like the you know you the prescribed one, yeah. and I've done the nose one. And the nose one, I'm getting bigger shit done, dude. I'm doing big things. I really, can't. I've only done the nose one, yeah. But it's like I, I will have I, like I bought it when I was like in this super depressive thing, and I was like, fuck. Well, that's All why right. I like Molly because Molly helped me, and it's proven to Same help shit. with PTSD, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff. And I remember one time on Molly, I just. Real, like you said, I really saw my life for the the success of each thing. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, was really yeah. nice to feel because as a, a depressive person, it's hard. You're to rarely look at, ever yeah. feeling anything see, that's, is that's successful to me. Yeah, because that's it. I, that's and how I, I, I cry. Like LSD, I would always see like the negative. I would always oh. see the negative. I see the negative a lot. Okay, the, I do too. But with LSD, LSD, it was like everything's hilarious. I just, <laughs> shrooms were I never, more. I would fun. love to do that's LSD. Shrooms were more fun oh, than LSD. Dude, than I used to do acid Saturdays, and it was like you just do acid every Saturday Man. and like walk around like Chinatown and oh, like, yeah. dude, just hearing like Taurus in Chinatown, like the funniest things you'll ever hear or like, I don't know, just riffing with other comics when you're on acid is like, this is what I want to do all the time. If yeah. you're with a good crew, a fun yeah, crew. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's what Molly is too. Yeah. If you don't have the right yeah. people around you and the right uh, ambiance, it fucks your whole thing up. Ketamine is definitely like, I'll figure out how to be happy here. I, like, <laughs> See, you know, that's I, why I really, I yeah, heard that I, about ketamine, that it, it really is a great, wherever, uh, yeah, wherever you're at. It's just like, I got it when I was real down and then, legitimately like i only did like a little bit and for like two three days i was like i feel fucking great wow uh, cool. and then i was like well let's see what we can do here and <laughs> uh and then dude there was a moment where my buddy who was with me he's like i want to be a poet man and i was like <laughs> this is the greatest drug i've ever yeah this shit rips dude uh i like love all it. of a sudden you've been transported back to the 20s in paris <laughs> dude, I an wish. Expat? yeah we're in a salon baby we're like <laughs> Dude, it's just me, Ernest Hemingway, and Picasso <laughs> smoking opium, dude. Yeah, it's so good. I love it. Where? Can, what's going on now? Where can people find you? Like, uh, tell us what's up. Instagram. Oh, uh, like you got anything going on? Yeah, I'm at the Comedy about? Cellar. You can nice. see me there. Oh, nice, um, and when does this come out? Uh, uh, when soon. That? Oh, when shit. If you're in week? Minneapolis on the yeah. 26th, uh, 26th and 27th, yes. Sorry. I'm going to be at Sisyphus Brewing. Uh, oh, yeah. uh-huh. And then, fuck, I know I'm somewhere else. Shit, Old I Sisyphus. This. Yeah, and then um, I'm around in New York all the time. But they Fucking can go to your DM Instagram. Me. What's yeah, your Instagram? Instagram is maxfine underscore. Um, I've got an album on Spotify called I Like His Style. And uh, legit, just DM me. I've got no one to talk to. <laughs> Uh, come on. Uh, hey, catch him in a K-hole. This guy's fucking incredible in a K-hole. If you can provide. I have done. Oh, 
What, this comes out Wednesday? Yeah. Friday the 19th, I am doing a 45-minute set on Mushrooms at Grove 34. Oh, oh dude. dude. Yes. Because uh, I'm trying. It's all new material. It's pay what you want. Oh. I'm just trying to work out new shit. Oh, I, so I think I might come to come that. Come through, dude. Yeah. It's going to awesome. be fun. It's going to be a lot of oh, fun. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, it's all brand new shit that I've never talked about that I'm just like trying to make work. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. fantastic. Uh, JoshAcardo.com, also working class holes. We have nine tour dates on the working class hole comedy Yo. tour we've been yeah, doing bro. it up uh there will be more and they will be announced probably in the next week and a half we'll be making it public for the ticket sales but we're gonna be in houston and seattle and all tons of places i can't wait to, to put it out there but yeah go to joshcardo.com and at joshcardo for all that stuff and you could also see that on edmcgowan.com follow me on instagram at edmcgowan comedy Email us oh, if yeah. you've ever done ketamine. If you've ever you talked to the FBI, uh, email us at workingclasscomedians at gmail dot com. We will see that's you guys. That's a great email address. Working class comedians. Yeah, that's yeah, a it's really great. good email. Yeah, it's, they wouldn't let us have uh, working class holes because it's a fucking such a great email. Fucking assholes. use yeah. it. Working class comedians. We'll see you use guys it. again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at working class holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in working class holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 